This is the system and it's all its glory. Uh, everything we talked about is here. We'll start with um, source input and then move our way around. So if we look at this here, this is your playback rack. So it's got iPhone or iPod, which go out here into the phone. You've also got a CD player and a tape player. We move to the back of the panel, rack. as you can see. And it's got left and right outputs for your CD, left and right outputs for your tape player, and left and right outputs for your iPhone or iPad. Okay, so you've got two mixer racks, mixer rack one, mixer rack two. They contain the same mixers and the same microphones. You have four wireless microphones, wireless mic one, wireless mic two, wireless mic three, and wireless mic four. We were talking about playback rack earlier on, and you saw the patch panel. So the patch panel is connected, or will be connected, to either mixer. In this case, we've got wireless mic one and wireless mic two, so that's WM1 and WM2, coming in the first, first two inputs of the desk, over here with the XLRs, iPad left and iPad right, or iPhone left and iPhone right, will come in three and four, and that's with the inputs at the top of the desk here. And you've also got CD left and CD right, which is going out of the patch panel and going into the desk. You'll see that both desks are labelled the same, um, and all you require, all you need to do, is just uh, plug the cables in. Okay, so you've got, as well as you've got two identical mix racks, mix rack one, mix rack two, you've also got two identical amp racks. Each amp rack contains two drive rack PA2s, which are the processors, and then four amps. So the PA2s I'll talk about in a little bit. But if we start from getting input into the amplifiers, we're going out of the main master outputs of one mixer, okay, into left and right inputs of the amp rack. Okay, so these boxes play the high frequencies, high mid frequencies, and mid frequencies. So it's three different elements. Thus, you need three amp channels to run it. So both amp racks are the same, so I'm just going to talk about one of them for the time being. I mentioned that the top box, which is called an 890H, requires three amp channels to run it. We've got two PA2s here. The top PA2 is solely processing the top boxes. The second PA2 is processing the subs so that's the kicks, kick one, kick two, and sub one. As you can see, you've got three amps here. These three amps are controlling the top boxes, basically. The top, this PC3301N is, pro, is basically providing power to the high frequencies. This XP7000 is providing volume to the high mids, and this second XP7000 is providing volume to the mids. If you want to mute any of these particular frequencies, you can. You can press these mute buttons here. If you come in any danger, just press those buttons and you'll be fine. The second PA2 is basically providing processing to kick 1 and 2 and sub 1. And those speakers are being powered by one large amplifier here, the T5N. The left side of the amp is providing power to the sub and the right side of the amp is providing power to kick one and kick two. Okay, so before I talk about a patch panel, I just want to talk about the speakers that you're getting. I've labelled each speaker, and I will label each cable so it's easy plug and play. As I mentioned, the top box is a three-way box, which means that three amp channels are used to run it, um, but for ease of use, we're sending four four frequencies into this top box with this large cable here. The fourth frequency, which is plus one, minus one, which is going to power your kicks, is split in the top box and it's split into this cable. This cable is then connected 
into the kick. And they're labelled kick one, kick two, kick three, and kick four. So basically, look at these top boxes as brains. That's how you should look at them. So you've got 890H1, 890H2, 890H3, and 890H4. And at the bottom, right at the bottom, you've got sub one and sub two. These are run with independent cables, which I'll show you on the patch bay in just a second. Okay, so we talked how signal gets into the mixer, how the mixer then sends signal into the PA2 processors, and then how the PA2 processors go into the amps. We're now going to talk about how you connect the speakers, basically, to the amplifiers. To do that, we've created two patch panels for you. They're labelled nicely, so they'll let you know exactly what you need to plug in, where you need to plug it in. You've got 890H1, 890H2, so they're the two high speakers that are on your left side, okay? You've got sub one, which is the large subwoofer that's on your left side as well. You then got 890H3 and 890H4, which is on your right side, the high frequency drivers on the right side. And then you've got subwoofer two, which is the large sub on the right side as well. Um, you've also got your inputs there and there, and that's inputs that we talked about earlier, going from the mixer into the amp rack. You've also got links. This is something I haven't talked about before. This is if and when you want to link your pre-existing truck system to this larger blue system. You can do that quite easily. So something we haven't talked about is wireless microphones really helpful, they're ideal for your current situation. You've got four of them. Uh, one, two, three and four. Let's talk about how you use one. So you've got these cases here which contain the mics. You unscrew like that. You need a battery. The batteries are kept inside the receivers which charge them. After every use, pop them back and charge them. Basically, you know where the battery is, and it's constantly charging it. Pop the battery in here, like so. Screw it up. I've labelled them so they coincide with each other, like that. Switch it on. Green light means on. One, two, one, two. We've got signal coming here. One, two, one, two. As I mentioned before, wireless microphone one is controlled by this volume knob here, or this volume side here. One two one two 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 two. Hello hello. So I thought it'd be best to talk about the back of the amp rack um, and just explain how everything is connected um, as easily as possible. So if we look at the top of the amp rack, you've got two PA2s. As I've said before, these processes, the top one is running the top high boxes, the 890s and the one below it is powering your subs, your kick in your sub, okay? You'll notice mic cables, XLRs, going out of it. They are then feeding the amps. As you can see, they're feeding all the, the inputs of the amps, okay? So, the three amps are powering the top box. So what I need to do is we needed to combine all the amp channels together into one thick cable. So that's what we're doing. We're combining all four frequencies into one thick cable at the bottom, and those thick cables are going out the 890 outputs, which are labelled 891, 892, 893, and 894. Okay, so as we mentioned before, both mixer racks and both amplifier racks are identical. The amplifier racks are powered by the Emo distributor at the bottom, and the mixer racks are powered by the Furman power conditioner at the bottom. The Emo rack has a 16 amp input, which is right here. That would go from your generator into the unit. That Emo would then power all the amplifiers. The Emo also has an output that would have a 16 amp to IEC cable which is going to be labelled 
would then go into the firmament. The firmament then distributed power between the mixer and the wireless radio. I'd recommend not linking NEMOs together because doing so will damage your system. So just make sure that each EMO powers each mixer rack and each amplifier rack independently. Okay, so as you can see, you've got two stacks of speakers and each stack can be used independently. Very easy to do that. If we look at the mixer racks and the amplifier racks, you can see that I've spread them apart. If we go to the output of each desk, you will see that the output is going to the input of each rack. And if we look at the other one, it's doing the same thing. So now, these two mixer and amp racks are two independent systems that you can use independently.